men have been asking for a safe space. Mm-hmm. Um, and it may not be, it may not be direct of, Hey, I need a safe space, but right. I feel like there's different signs and different ways that we say these things. Sure. Uh, I think it's very important for men to understand that uh, going to therapy is not a simp move. Right. Um, what she's talking about as far as being able to be okay in a society and not be aggressive or be overly aggressive and, and handle all those things, that can also be dealt with outside of the gym through a therapist. Um, super important to self-reflect, uh, get the shadow work done get rid of that childhood trauma or not get rid of it, but work on it and address it. Mm-hmm. That's just what I'm saying. And mm-hmm. I, I love therapy. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I'm curious though, if you don't mind, Go ahead. you mentioned that men are craving asking for a safe space, but they may not be saying it in those words. What are some signs? What are some ways that I could observe other women could observe a man mentioning that he needs a safe space if he's not utilizing those specific words um well what you said earlier is like you said a lot of women do say that he's not speaking he's Mm -hmm. shutting down and i think women often take that as we're not communicating or we're up to something Mm -hmm. but like you said a lot of us we have to strategize yes and i know that uh we spoke earlier about putting things in compartments Mm -hmm. for myself like i have a countdown of like how how high is this threat? Mm. When does it need to be dealt with? Mm-hmm. So the fact that I do get quiet is I do need that space away. Right. And then when I come back to the situation, mm-hmm. I think there's a way to approach it maybe of, you know, are you okay to talk right now? Or like, yes. where are you? Where are you at this moment? Mm-hmm. Or can we revisit the conversation? Yes. So I think there's ways, it's, it's instead of instantly thinking that we're shutting down to avoid or neglect you know, your feelings or anything like that. Right. So I, that's, I think that's a huge thing for men. Um, because I, I think I, I feel personally that, uh, before therapy and before being on like a wellness journey mm-hmm. that I communicated like very primitively, mm-hmm. like just super aggressive or just go to, just go to the gym yeah. and like, that was my only outlet. Um, so there's just other ways to do it besides the gym and also through therapy, you know, and meditating is also great too. Amazing. Meditating is mm-hmm. amazing. And just being able to sit with yourself and just be silent yes. is, is super important because I feel like there's, I feel like we're battling things that I can look at another man and not say something to him mm-hmm. and just automatically know that he's going through something. Right. And then I feel like it relates differently or it comes out differently when that same look is shown to a woman. Interesting. Like how, um, let's use the gym for example. Mm-hmm. Men, women, both attractive. We're both on the same thing, either trying to lose weight, trying to gain weight, trying to better ourselves. Mm-hmm. But there's just this taboo about speaking to someone in the gym. Yes. So uh, women can take it as, oh, he's being aggressive and like this is my personal space or whatever. But he may just be, feel, this is like, I'm, this is where I'm comfortable. Right. And I may not want to necessarily want to have sex with you, mm-hmm. but I could just give you a compliment and it just be a compliment. Right. And I feel that a lot of times receiving a compliment from a man um, is an automatic like he wants to have sex with me. And it's yes. it's really not always that, you know, it's just like I see you in a sense, you know, and I don't think we get the same thing back. We, as far as like an I see you from a woman. Got it. Yeah. And I think that that feeds into the parts of the red pill society, because anything that you're looking at, there's more than likely some truth to it. This is the part where I can understand why the red pill society exists and why it's, it's become such a powerful um, uh, group. And it is because women, we are as a collective shooting ourselves in the foot by making a demand that we are just like you We are just as good as men and that you creating so many um, hard stops. So many like we where women collectively are giving men the Heisman, so to speak. Anytime a man is trying to come forward, we're just like, you're you're too close. So and it has to be within context. So one man's flirt, depending on how he looks and presents, 
is another man's sexual harassment. Yes, yes. And we are not doing a good job as women being able to explain why it's sexual harassment versus being an attract an attractive opportunity. Men are frustrated. Men are not understanding what is the difference and why am I a threat if I'm being kind to you. So because of your behavior, women, I am now going to pull back my finances and resources. I'm now going to reduce my presence. I'm going to reduce my intentions, my efforts, because I don't want what my intentions are in terms of creating connection with you to be misconstrued as sexual harassment because you don't like how I look. I'm not your type. I remember going out with a, it was a bunch of women and men and one of the ladies, this is back in like 2017, a guy was walking, we're all in a group and the women were in front, the guys were being gentlemen standing in the back and one gentleman, he began to pick up his pace, come to the front to open the door on our behalf. And one, one young lady was just like, excuse me, I can open my own door. And I told her, I said, speak for yourself. I'm fine if he opens the door. That is confusing and chaotic for a man. Men need consistency. Men are very simple, right? Once, you know what I'm saying? One, two, three, what you want, I got you. So what women need to realize is that if you feel like men are no longer princes and they're a bunch of frogs, it's because we have made them into toads. Mm -hmm. Women have made, have turned the princes into toads. We have become the frog farmers. We are the ones that told men, I don't want you to be a prince. You can be a frog. So that is our responsibility collectively as women. I know every woman doesn't do it, but you know we need to speak in generalizations because then it gets too dicey. But that's what has happened. We have made it okay for men to give us the bare minimum. We have lowered our standards and men are not creating this. They are responding to this. That's the part that women need to own. That is why the Red Pill community is successful. That's why it exists because it is true. Women reject the the construction worker who might have a little bit of a dad bod, right? He might have a little bit of a dad bod, but he's hardworking. He's fairly attractive. He's five foot 11. So he doesn't have all the sixes. He's not six foot tall with a six pack and six figures, right? But he's fairly attractive, but she doesn't want him. Not because he's not a good candidate and not because he's not good enough, but because women are wired we're, we have a very nasty mindset, unfortunately. We are very critical. We are very judgmental. We are doing it because we want the other women around us to respect our fly based on the man that we're with. Mm. It's a lot of projection around what other people are going to say about who, the, who, who this man is to me. That's a, that's a problem. That is a massive problem for mainstream America Certainly, when you are on, when you're arrived at a certain echelon, you can think like that. And people who are at the top echelon are the ones who are dominating the podcasts. So you have high echelon people having these conversations around how they pick. Mainstream people are consuming this information mm -hmm. and they're trying to adopt these ways. It's not gonna work for you, mama. You don't qualify because you are really thick. You went and got a BBL, and now you look like Donkey Kong. Very broad up here. Okay. Tiny little waist, mm -hmm. big bottom, right? And I can say that, right? Like, some guys may not want to say that, but I'll say it, right? Y'all looking like Donkey Kong out here. You know what I'm saying? And and now you want to be treated like you are size six, upper echelon. You know, it just doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. You're not really going to be able to have that. And same thing for, 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 for some of the gentlemen, right? Overweight. Right. You, you, you are, your social cues are off. Right. You're social. You, you're not charismatic. You cannot hold a conversation. You're not adding depth. You can't get the 10. Mm -hmm. Why? Why are you looking for the 10? Who are you to look for the 10? Why are you judging a woman who can get a 10 because she doesn't want you? We need to be more realistic. That's what's going. On. So in, in that regard, I understand why men are frustrated with women because women have made it impossible for men to be able to observe how do I stand in my masculine frame as a man to pursue you to be the protector provider if you're constantly rejecting me and I don't even know why it's such what you were saying I feel like personally there's a sliding scale on the bare minimum and like you said um, a decent man or decent looking man start with looks um, start with looks and then finances mm -hmm. his bare minimum could be 
the maximum for a, a, a non handsome person, mm-hmm. you know, and I feel that we see this and some of us know that we are in a higher percentage. Mm-hmm. Um, and some of us do take advantage of it. Right. But it's also the fact that we see the bullshit that you guys are, are feeding each other. Yes. Cause I see on a daily basis that, um, saying how you feel is what's sassy for a man. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, Walking, walking on the outside is sassy because holding an umbrella is sassy. Like there's a whole new thing of sassy. And then right. I just learned what simp was. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got called a simp in the comments. I was like, right. what's a simp? I thought he meant pimp. Right. But no, nah, simp. Um, so why does it always feel like men are being tested by women? Sure. So yes, there is something called feminine testing, right? That's what I call it. But the Red Pill Society, they call it shit testing. And basically, a woman is the... So the Bible will say that the woman is the weaker vessel, right? Mainstream society will say that um, we are vulnerable, right? We're more vulnerable physically. We're vulnerable. We don't have as much testosterone as you do, right? And even when we do get a, a you know an increase in our testosterone, right? When we're ovulating, it's for about a week, right? So what you get for four weeks out of the month, we get for a week. Right when we're at, when we are at, at our best, as a result of being vulnerable, feeling vulnerable, you're constantly checking for safety. And if I'm going to sit down and I want to know if I'm going to be safe, I'm going to shake the chair. I'm going to mm-hmm. I'm going to shake the table a little bit. I want to see can it can it thrive? Can it survive this pressure? So one of the things I will constantly tell men: Hear me good, please, please stop telling women that you are scared of them. Like I was scared to approach you. I was scared to talk to you. You know, you look so attractive. I was afraid. Stop telling women this because if you are afraid of me, how are you going to protect us? Because I'm my least, I'm my least threat in my eyes. Mm. But if I'm your greatest threat, why would I submit my life to you in your hands? That doesn't make any sense. So I really want men to stop saying things like that. I understand what you're meaning to say, but that's not, a great way to convey your masculine strength. So with that being said, she's going to test if you are where your strengths are. That's one. Two, women feel the most comfortable with truth. And what happens is as a man, as the masculine, where you may compartmentalize your truth, right? As you begin to grow in relationships and you recognize if I tell this woman all this information, she is going to flip out. She's not going to be okay. Mm. I don't trust that she's going to be able to emotionally regulate herself. So I'm going to give her a part of the truth. In her intuition, she may sense that there's more to the story that's not being said. And so she'll continue to sift. She'll continue to pull and to kind of like draw water out of the well, so to speak, or draw information out of you. Or God forbid you say something and she's just like, wait a minute. You didn't say that the last time that we spoke. Or where is this receipt from? You don't even like Burger King. So what's this receipt doing in the car, right? And so you, you, you start to struggle. And so what she is looking for is absolute truth, not a part of the truth, the complete full truth, because she wants to know that her reality is being protected. Anytime you lie, you're stealing someone's reality. You are a thief. She wants to know that she is in safe company. And the safer a woman feels is according to how much truth he shares. I get it. I already know what y'all men about to say. Women can't handle the truth. What we cannot handle, what you deem as we cannot handle the truth is our natural mode. Men like women and they love vagina, but they don't get women. And a lot of men don't even like women. They don't even like the essence of a woman her emotional bandwidth, right? That softness. If you want a woman to be soft, if you want her to be feminine and penetrable, what do you think that's going to look like? It's not. She's not going to look hard and firm all the time. Mm. So you have to embrace and hold space for her emotions if you want a feminine counterpart, right? And so if you want her to be soft and you want her to be feminine, then she needs to know that she is safe. So that is why a woman will consistently shake. Third reason is because a woman is excellent at processing data and and basically um, mimicking, for lack of better terms, or modeling, right? Copycatting, right, would be the layman's terms. 
So as an example, for me as a as a woman, over time when I study my man, I know how he wants his plate of food. Right. So it's always so interesting when you see a woman that's come out of a relationship into her next relationship. She's going to prepare the next man's food the way she prepared her last man's food. So if her her former boyfriend liked gravy on his right, like the gravy on top of the rice, but her new man wanted on the side, she doesn't know that yet. Mm. So she's going to present him the plate with the gravy on top of the rice and he might correct her and say, no, I don't like my food that way. So she'll learn how to prepare his food. So another reason why a woman is testing is because she wants to know what the culture of this relationship is, this dynamic. So she's going to be testing to see what is going to be consistent. What is this consistent mode? And if there is anything inconsistent, she's going to point it out. Now with the consistent mode, um, as a woman, are you prepared for a multidimensional man? Because I feel like uh, women are looking for just from, from the gate alpha. Right. And they put their own, they put their own um, terms of what alpha means to them. Fair. So when we're presenting ourselves as just ourselves, that's all, that's all you guys see us as. Mm -hmm. But for us to give you more of our dimensions or our facets, we have to feel safe. Mm -hmm. And we're feeling safe by not telling you these things sometimes. Correct. And that's, that is, that is right to do. Um, And not telling you our, let's say sexual uh, desires Mm -hmm. because we want you, Mm -hmm. but we also like, like you said, vagina, Mm -hmm. you know, and we don't understand how Mm -hmm. we don't understand how you don't get that. Okay. And how you can take that as, as a knock towards yourself because it it, it takes nothing from you for me to want other women. Right. Unless I'm not reassuring you or if I'm disrespecting you. Sure. But if I'm not doing that and, and I'm doing everything I'm supposed to, it baffles us that you're so insecure if we look at another woman. Okay. So that I think that's, that's Would you feel issue. insecure if she started looking at other cars and other tangible things that other men have acquired? Me personally? Mm-hmm. No. I mean, for men at large. At large, I, under, I understand. I understand other men being... Right, like what if she was on a date and her man is in a Honda Civic and she's like, ooh, look at that Porsche. I get that. Mm-hmm. I get that. But when is when is it? When is a man secure in himself where none of that material matters? Mm-hmm. And so we can handle this in multiple ways. So let's kind of bring this back to the original question, which is: Can a woman handle when a man is multidimensional? So mm-hmm. let's put a tangible example on that, so I can give the best response. Okay. So if a man goes to the gym mm-hmm. and is in therapy mm-hmm. and Say meditates. Mm-hmm. I'm using myself as an example. Sure. Her doing the same things she did with her ex who didn't do any of those things, mm-hmm. or maybe he just did one of them, say go to the gym. Mm-hmm. Her coming into a new relationship, bringing the same uh, old bag of tricks, and then getting confused as to why she's not receiving the same, or, or it almost feels like I've outgrown her, mm-hmm. or I'm growing at a different pace, mm-hmm. when really I'm trying to lead her. Got you. So there's like this myth around outgrowing a partner. It's not a real tangible problem because 69% of challenges are unsolvable. It's about being able to manage them. So my dad and his wife, she's a devout Seventh-day Adventist. And for years, my father didn't step foot in a church. So people sometimes will have the belief that you have to, in order for you to be equally yoked, you got to be doing the same things. That's not true. So if you're leading her, it's she doesn't have to be doing the same things as you mm-hmm. for the relationship to be successful. If she if you're not feeling like she's treating you well, then this is an opportunity where I would encourage men. This is where you need to learn how to vet and verify. Gentlemen are having a hard time vetting and verifying, which I'm actually beginning to pivot my coaching a bit because after working with hundreds of couples, I've recognized that the the genesis of the problem is that, you, yes, you did marry the wrong person. You pick wrong. I'm just going to go out and say it. Mm. You did. If you're wondering and thinking, I think I'm, yeah, you did. You probably really did because you did not vet and verify. You married for passion and pleasure. You did not marry for purpose. So if you as a gentleman recognize that you are taking care of your mental health, your physical health, and you see maybe maybe you're a chubby chaser 
maybe you, you know you like a little bit of thickness but maybe in the back of your mind you have sort of this thought that i would love to date a six seven kind of girl mm. get her in the gym turn her into a nine right like groom her in that way for the for the best of intentions right and you want that you need to vet and verify that she's coachable you need to vet and verify that she's flexible right so if she's resistant which is a natural human order we have a natural resistance to change mm. you know that's why we that's why if you don't change you atrophy you collapse in yourself you become sloppy lazy right but change and pressure and exercising builds muscle builds grit Right. And so if you are a man that you can handle the grit and you know that you cannot handle a woman that is going to be whining and complaining, you need to vet and verify. Is this a woman who is coachable? That's on you. Now, earlier you said that um, a woman will transform into what she believes that we like. Mm -hmm. And I also hear women saying that men are liars at first. Mm -hmm. And so they're everything that they want. And then the mask comes off, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So. Can a woman pretend that she's coachable in the beginning while holding on to who she really is? That's a really good question. Yes, absolutely. Um, so going back to a woman being malleable, that's in the context of love. So we want to always provide context. When gentlemen are feeling like, as an example, a woman should just be submissive. Submissive to whom? To whom? Right? Like, I think a bad question that women want to know is, does he love me? You should probably be asking him, where are you going in your life? Mm. So she can discern, can I, can I join you on this journey? Otherwise, we're going to have a problem with people steering this ship. She's going here and you're going there. So that's why I said it's not a matter of outgrowing each other. You probably didn't belong to, to each other in the first place. So you cannot outgrow something that wasn't grown together in the beginning. It's a facade. So do we have a representative? 100%. Majority of people who are dating... How we show up because we're sophisticated beings, we're human beings, we can have a representative that will show up as ourselves and not be it. And that's why you need to vet and verify. You're verifying. You are, in, you are inspecting what you expect. So if she says, oh, I love going to the gym, but she doesn't own a pair of sneakers <laughs> or she doesn't have a water bottle or she's not asking you questions about pre-workouts, right? Like she's not saying things like, Oh, my lips are tingling so that you can tell her, well, yeah, that's what happens when you drink a pre, right? Her conversation, her speech, her habits do not reflect how what she's presenting. You get to watch that over time within six months in, or less. You will know. Mm -hmm. But that's if you have the intention out the gate being intentional about vetting and verifying. But if, you, if you're coming into it for pleasure, mm -hmm. then that's what you're going to be looking for. Pleasure means we don't have uncomfortable conversations. Pleasure means we're not talking about finances. Pleasure means we're not talking about the deep, dark truth about our the dark depths of our sex, sexuality and what we want to experience, the boundaries that we want to surpass. We're not having those conversations. What we're doing is we're being superficial. You can meet my mom and dad. We can go to Saint-Tropez. We can go on a couple of dates. I won't take you to the Cheesecake Factory for whatever reason, right? Like that's become a curse word. I'm going to wine you and dine you. I'm not going to ask you how many children that you want to have. I'm not going to ask any of these difficult conversations. I'm going to strictly make this pleasurable. That is why people get duped. That is why 50% of marriages are failing. It's not because there's anything wrong with the institution of marriage. It is that majority of people married for pleasure. And the ones that have made it are the ones who have figured out how to communicate to one another, how to accept influence from one another, right? And how to comfort one another. So people who may, may not even... <clears throat> stand the chance of being successful. Like, let's say there was infidelity in the relationship or the guy was a knucklehead or something like that. Maybe at some point he decided he, he had a come to Jesus moment with himself. He sat with himself and he's just like, yo, I'm going to lose this woman. And he decides to pivot. If he continued on the path that he was originally on, they would not have made it. Mm -hmm. Despite the outgrowing rhetoric. It's, it's, it's irrelevant. It's not true. What it is true is, are you accepting my influence? Uh, do I feel comfortable speaking with you? Right? Like, are you, I believe um, Alan once said for him and his wife that that's, that she is his, right? Like that's, my, right? He loves her. I thought that was super cute. Right? Um, and and, 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 and but what he is saying is that she has my back. Yeah. 
And I am loyal to her. She is loyal to me. I know who she is. She knows who I am. That is a marriage that is going to stand the test of time. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with whether or not they're going to grow together. His wife could be a devout Catholic. He may never step foot in church. But because he knows who she is and she knows who he is and that he's, he is where he says he's going to be, she is where she says she's going to be. There's trust there. The relationship can absolutely more than survive. It can thrive. Trust and respect. Trust, respect, vulnerability. I need to know that I am my full self with you. And that after I've revealed myself, you still respect me. So you said something earlier about men not being having opportunities to be vulnerable. You guys have that correct. 